Y'all know what's going on. It's time for another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker. Welcome to the show, y'all. This is another episode of Conversations in Prison, Real Conversations in Prison. Um, I decided to do these types of shows, like I said before, because I want you to hear the actual dialogue between the individuals in prison as opposed to me telling the story all the time. I think it adds more depth to the show, and uh, I hope that you enjoy it. Give me the honest truth on the feedback. Let me know in the comment section if you enjoy this a lot. If you help me understand a little bit about, you know, how we have to interact with our peers in here and the people that are in charge of our keep. Uh, let me know what you really think about that in the uh, comment section, all right? But in this episode, we're going to be having a conversation with this guy. This is a sad story that uh, doesn't want to leave prison. I know that may be hard for some of you to understand, right? But a lot of people get out of prison every day and they're homeless. And there's a very important case right now that's being argued in front of the Supreme Court in a few days that talks about treating homelessness as a crime. And how would that affect the people that are getting out of prison and don't have anywhere to go for various different reasons? Um, how do you think that would affect them? And not, to, not just them, but the people that are out there that are just trying to make it and do to no fault of their own, uh, they have nowhere to go. And I think it'll be a real big problem when you have people that are getting out of prison that are going to be criminalized and penalized again just because they don't have anywhere to go. you got to remember, while we're in prison, we're not making any money to be able to save up so we can get out and get a place. We don't have resources like a lot of people say we do, a lot of people think we do, to get us somewhere to stay. You know what I'm saying? So just pay attention to this dialogue, and I hope that you learn something from it. And uh, enjoy the show, y'all. Mr. Johnson. Hey, how you doing, sir? How you doing, sir? How you doing, sir? Uh, yeah. Brian, I wanted to talk to you. How'd you like that breakfast this morning? I mean, I, 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 it, was, it was it was good. I, it was good. I, I, As I, usual, you are I, I, I know, right? You always do a great job. You Thank you so much, sir. Job. I really appreciate uh, that. Uh, in the child hall now. Uh, well, You've been an asset. I hate I, I, I am what I am. Listen, I was thinking that maybe for lunch, I throw a little bit of paprika in with the, uh, the home yeah, fries right. and really yeah. spice them up for you. Sounds good. Yeah. But look, yeah. look, I need to talk to you about something that's very important to you, and I, I think it's great news. Those new, we're gonna get those new ovens. Oh my God, thank God, oh. because the new, the, I mean, they said they got air fryers in them, and it's really good. I really think it's gonna it save us a lot of time. It's not, son, slow down. Slow down for a second and let me talk to you, okay? Just calm down. It's something that I need to talk to you about that's very important, and it has absolutely nothing to do with the fries in the kitchen or anything that you do here, right? Just I, I slow down, just listen, let me explain to you. The courts have ruled that juveniles uh, should not be given life sentences. Okay. And as a result of that court ruling, do you understand what I'm saying? I think so, but... Okay, I as mean, a result, just listen to me now, I'll explain as I go. As a result of that court ruling, uh, everybody that was sentenced as a juvenile to life in prison, they have reviewed their sentences, and you were 16 when you came into prison, right? Yes, sir. And you've done about 25 years on your sentence, so the courts have determined that, and the DAs and, and, and the districts that you're from, they're gonna let you out. No. So we have to get your paperwork ready in 30 days to get you out. You're gonna have to go in front of the parole board, but that's a formality. You're gonna go in front of the parole board, they're gonna look at your situation, they're gonna try to figure out what's the best uh, route for you to take how to be successful on parole. Sir, sir, hold on. I need you to slow down. No, I'm not going anywhere. I'm, I'm fine here. I'm ha no, sir. I have. This is my world. I can't go out. That's Brian, not my world. Brian, listen. And we're gonna have some people to talk to you. I know this is I don't a shock need, to you. No, right now. I don't need to talk to nobody, sir. I'm fine. Leave me alone. If that's that's fine for them. Okay, I accepted. 
my plight a long time ago and I have done the best that I can and I don't have anybody out there, sir. I have nothing. In here, I have a great job. So you don't have any family? No, I have you nothing. stayed in touch with? The, no, they left me the day I got locked up. I couldn't even tell you how to find them. Well, we're gonna work on that. We got we got people that can try to track them down. We got we got some information out of your file. So you know your, your contact person in the file is it's the it's the prison volunteer chaplain. The prison volunteer. So he's not in touch with no your family. I'm not even from this place, sir. I'm from way out east, sir. Well, that's not a problem. I mean, no, we it can is. find somebody. Please don't do this to me. I haven't. I've done everything y'all told me to do. So this is not a bad thing. It is a bad thing. I'm begging. Please no, not. It's, Listen, son, I understand this is traumatic for you, but this is not. You're going to go home. I, I have no release. home. Yes. Well, we're going to help you with that. We got halfway houses, and we're going to put you in. We're going to help you. I have the job. a home. I have a home. I don't need a half a house. I got a full house. It's a nice little cell, and I've made it comfortable. And I, I mean, look, listen, 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 listen to me, sir. I'm listening. I took some, I took some food out of the kitchen. Okay, that's against the rules. No, okay. no you're not even in any trouble. No, I'm saying it won't, won't you're not this will you stay. No, no, it won't. Brian, listen to me. You're not in trouble and you're not staying. You can't stay. Well, we have to let you out. What if I go out there and I hurt that guard? If I beat him down, then they'll make they'll let me stay. Brian, I understand what you're trying to do. What I'm telling you is that we're gonna be with you. We're gonna be with you. We know you came in as a kid and I understand. So I've never been on the internet. I had, I don't know how to do anything. I don't know anything about learn. that world. You can learn. It's so, nothing to be afraid of, trust me. It's nothing to be afraid of. You can learn. And we're going to have people to help you learn. It's not something that you should be afraid of. we got a nice halfway house. I'm that 30 be... years old, sir. Listen, just leave me alone. I have, look, let me fall through the cracks. It happens every day. Can't I, do that. Yes, you can. You're not even trying. Can't sir, do that. I have never, ever done anything wrong in here. I do everything y'all tell me to do. No, I do it without no complaint. I, I work 18, 19 hours shift. Please, sir. Please. And, 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 and we appreciate that. You didn't let me stay. I can't. I can't. It's not in, I, I have no say in this. I'm doing you, what you're I'm You're my told. counselor, sir. I am. I am. And, and, and I hope that you would trust me as your counselor when I tell you that this is the best thing for you. It's, it's not, not the prison. No. It's, this isn't a prison. This is my home. I don't have anything out there, sir. Please. I'm begging you. I understand. But... Listen to me, Brian, listen to me. We're going to have people to help you. And we're going to have people that are going to talk to you and be there for you every step of the way. But we have to let you out. We cannot. And what am I going out to? Live under a bridge? No, no, you're not going to live under a bridge. You're going to live in a halfway house. Let me explain to you what a halfway house is. It's a community of people that are in a similar situation as yours. They're, they're getting out of prison, right? So you're going to be around some people that have been in prison that can understand you, right? But at the same time, you're going to have these people that run this halfway house that are going to be talking to you and helping you, guiding you through what it is that you're going to be going through. We understand that you're not familiar with any of that. But this is not a bad thing. What if you send me to another prison? Then my paperwork will get lost and it'll take longer and y'all can just keep sending me from prison to prison. Brian, I'm so sorry. But we can't. We can't do that. What if I go to the hole? I can do some time on the hole. I've never been, but it should be fine. I've been locked down before. Please, sir, I'm begging you. Don't do this to me. I've done nothing wrong. Brian, I, I sympathize with you. Uh, but you got to think about it like this. You got some people in here that will give their right leg for what the doctor Let them have it. Now give them my spot. I understand. I will give it to them gladly. I'm begging you, sir. Please don't do this to me. I understand. But we I have mean, to. We I, have got, to. I got the dinner shift tonight. Brian, you don't have to worry about that anymore. You don't have to worry about what that. What do I do? You're going to be fine. You're going to get out. I tell you what. When you get out of here, we can talk to the people at the halfway house and they can get you a job at a restaurant doing the same things you're doing in here. Now, what, what do you think about that? How but that I, this is my home. I don't, but you can home. Build, I don't want to go out there. I like build, it in here. You can build another home. No. You can build another home. You don't have to, look, you don't have to forget about these guys. 
You don't have to forget about it. They can call you. Don't don't they sound good? They'll be able to call you. You can write them. You know, or you can just stay been here. Out for it, but you can't stay. After you've been out for a year, the warden will let you come back and see some of your friends. This is a good thing for you. This is a good thing for you, and I know it's scary. My life is over. It's not over. I don't. It's not over. It's not over. It's just beginning. You were a kid when you came, and I understand. You don't understand what's going on fully, but I'm telling you, trust me. Don't you trust me? I thought I did. I don't know what to do now. You're gonna be fine. Um, you're gonna be fine. Just trust me on it. You're gonna be just fine. Everything's gonna work out. You're gonna be just fine. Um, I'm, uh, sir, I'm, I'm gonna go and uh, start the dinner prep. Uh, the, can we just pretend we didn't have this conversation and I, I go there and I just, you know. I can't do that. I gotta let, I gotta let my supervisor know we've started the paperwork on you and uh, we're going to try to locate somebody in your family if we can. I don't have anybody. Um, Brian, calm down now. Now, if we can't find anybody, we like to say we got the halfway house as an option for you. And we're going to get some people. We're going to be talking to you. Counselors there. Therapists there. We're going to have everything that you need so that you can make that transition. But this is going to happen. This is gonna happen. All my life I've done what you people told me to, and I accept it. Now when you tell me that I've got my life in mode, we're done with you. Get out. That's not fair. Right, I wish you wouldn't take it like that, but I can't tell you how you should take it, but I wish you wouldn't take it like that, uh, because uh, this is something out of our control, and if, and if we could keep you, I would love to keep you here. If we had more guys like you here, this uh, prison would be such a bad place. But the reality is that... Can I sue them to stay? No, you cannot. No, you cannot. They sued them to let them out. No. Why can't I sue them to stay? It's not how it works. It's not how it works. You're going home. Well, they first they told me this is how it works. You get locked up. Fine, I killed a man. I accepted that. I was fine. And now all of a sudden, sudden you tell me, well, this is how it works. We're going to let you out when you're home, you know, when you're comfortable. That's not fair. It's not fair, sir. I hope that all of you listening to this episode understand that this was a real encounter. This actually happened. A young man that had come in here after 16 years, uh, I mean at 16 years old, did uh, 25 plus years, 20 to 25 years, and all of a sudden the court said release him. And he had no idea what he was going to do. He actually begged these people to stay here because he didn't have a clue as to what he was going to do. He had no family. What family he had had died and no others had abandoned him. And he didn't know what he was going to do. They made this man leave prison unprepared, uh, but now, thankfully, uh, he's doing fine. He was afraid because he had never been in a situation like that, and he didn't know what to think, and he had acclimated himself to this environment, and he felt comfortable here. Everybody treated him like he mattered here. Now he had to go back to the outside world, the free world, where he was unfamiliar with anything. The only thing he had experienced the free world was pain, and he didn't want to go back to that. And I think for a lot of people hearing a story like this, I hope that it opens up your eyes to the reality that, you know, people get out of prison and they don't have anywhere to go. People get out of prison and some people, when they get out of prison, they don't want to get out of prison because in here, you are somebody. But at the same time, you're in an environment that is not healthy, not conducive to you become a better human being most cases. But in this case, it gave Brian a purpose. It gave him a, a reason to continue to want to live. But now he's out, I'm glad to say that he's out and he's doing fine. Uh, this is one of those successful ones. I just want you to hear that. This has been another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker, and I say peace, y'all.